All right, so this is the second part of the video. In the previous part, I talked about what Lorentz series is, the statement, but we have skipped the proof and we have kept it for a separate video. But at the beginning, after the assertion of the statement, I wanted to give you a set of examples of different types of problems where you can find out the Lorentz series if there is a singularity about which you are trying to expand to the function in an, in an annular region. So that being said, the region between two concentric circles. And once we have found out the Lorentz series, uh, I also talked about the validity of it. That means you need to talk about the convergence radius or the radius of convergence, that means in which the series converges. Outside the area of convergence, the series expression is uh, not equal to the function that is being expanded, or at least more importantly, or more specifically, the analytic expression of the function. So we have seen two expressions. One is the analytic expression, just like we have one here. So this is the analytic expression. And then from this, we find out either the Taylor series or the Lorentz series um, based on the type of singularities and other properties of the Lorentz series. And that gives us a series expression, the analytic expression versus the series expression. And both of these agree within the radius of convergence. And then we'll need to find out the type of singularity that we are talking about. So that's basically the gist of what we have done in the previous video. In this video, what we are willing to do is to continue that work and find out the Lorentz series uh, for different types of functions. Now, here we have a function which looks a lot like the example one that we have done in the previous video. And the method of finding out the Lorentz series would be more or less the same. We also see that this function has a singularity at z minus z equal to 1. So z minus 1 cubed is the factor that's bearing the singularity. It is, it can be regarded as a polynomial. And this polynomial has a 0 at z equal to 1. That's why the whole function as a singularity because z minus 1 whole cubed is located in the denominator. So this is given and now we proceed to expand this thing into its corresponding series expression and this is how we do it. So the first thing we do is to define a new variable and we call it u. You can give it some other name, but we're going to call it u, and u is going to be defined as z minus the problematic point, which is 1. And this gives us an expression for z, which in this case is u plus 1. Now, if we substitute that into our own function, we find that f of z... Well, I'm keeping the z because uh, at the end, we'll have to come back to z. So that part is known, but now we're going to regard this function as a function of u, which when substituted leads us to this expression, e to the power 2, instead of z, we plug in 1 plus u, divided by z minus 1 is just u, so we have u cubed. Now we separate the factors in the numerator, so we have e squared, times e to the power twice u divided by uh, u cubed. Now, u cubed itself is a polynomial and we are trying to expand this function about the point u equal to 0, which in turns means z equal to 1, right? So we keep it as such, so we have e squared divided by u cubed. But now e to the power twice u has a variable in the exponential, so we can expand it. 
and when we expand it, it's a simple expansion. We have 1 plus ycu plus ycu whole squared divided by 2 factorial, right, plus 2 ycu all cubed divided by 3 factorial plus so on and so forth. All right? Okay. So now, what do we find in this? Well, what I'd like to do, since we are interested in finding out the radius of convergence, and in order to find out the radius of convergence, you'll have to find out the ratio between the n plus 1 term and the n term, and then have to take a limit that says limit n tends to infinity, and of course there is a modulus, and this gives us 1 over r, right? So what I'm interested to do is to find out the general expression, which cat is an index, and by which we then can apply this formula and then can find out the radius of convergence. Now, uh, on one hand, we have e squared divided by u cubed, and we have the sum over uh, n equals zero, infinity and then we have 1 over in factorial and then we have 2u all to the power n okay so that's the n term so what does that give us we have e squared and then I can bring the u cubed inside the sum and then we have sum over 1 over n factorial and then we have 2 to the power n u to the power n minus 3. We can actually bring the e square inside as well so I'm going to do that so sum over n going from 0 to infinity f of z and then this is equal to e squared 2 to the power n divided by n factorial then u to the power n minus 3. So that part is done, but I want to write down the series part. So for that, what do we have? We have f of z equals, well, we have e squared times 1 over u factorial, I'm sorry, u cubed, plus 2 divided by u squared, plus 2 squared divided by 2 factorial, and then upstairs we had u squared, but downstairs we have u cubed, so we have just a u, plus 2 cubed divided by 3 factorial, after this, we have 3 cubed, I'm sorry, u cubed. In the denominator, we also have u cubed. So there is no u in this term. Plus 2 to the power 4 divided by all factorial. And then we have u plus dun dun dun. And in this manner, this goes on. Now at this stage, we can substitute z minus 1 instead of u. So what do we find? is e squared divided by z minus 1 whole cubed plus 2 e squared divided by z minus 1 whole squared plus 2 squared divided by 2 factorial z minus 1 plus 2 cubed divided by 3 factorial plus 2 to the power 4 divided by 4 factorial times z minus 1, and so on and so forth. Like before, we have the residue here, which is 2 squared divided by 2 factorial. So the residue a minus 1 is going to be 2 squared divided by 2 factorial. We have 4 divided by 2 which is 2. The order of the pole, so there is a pole that equal to 1, 
is a pole because it's a singularity and the order is negative three so it's a pole of order three okay it's also called a triple pole um this uh, series has a radius of convergence so let us find it out so here we have the two terms one is u of n plus 1, so that's the n plus 1 term. By the way, I think there is going to be a misunderstanding. This u is de defining which term is it. This u and this u here, they're not the same. Perhaps I should have used a different kind of symbol. So from the next problem I will, but let's uh, get along with this one. So we have... 1 over r equals limit r tends to, well, uh, this is not r tends to, this is going to be n tends to. So let's correct that. So n tends to infinity. We have u of n, n plus 1 and then u of n with a modulus. Okay, I think I got that right. So limit n tends to infinity well within the modulus we have um, well e squared and e squared cancel themselves 2 to the power n plus 1 and 2 to the power n has a ratio of 2 in the downstairs we have n plus 1 because n plus 1 factorial and n factorial has a ratio of n plus 1 and then, of course, we have this thing where I have u to the power 1, which is this u. So that's the ratio. And this is called the ratio test, by the way, because we use the ratio. So we have limit n tends to infinity, then 2 times z minus 1 divided by n plus 1. Well, as long as we have z finite and n increasing, then of course we are going to have an infinite downstairs. So this is going to be zero, which makes the radius of convergence equals infinity. So that means the series is convergent everywhere except at z equal to one. I think this is helpful. Let's go on to the next example.